And, and so what would be some of the things that uh, God taught you in that journey um, living internationally? I can, one story comes to mind right now as you ask that, Tim, uh, Jim, that, um, so I, it wasn't that, I was probably in the country a few weeks and um, I was walking along the road and I saw, heard like metal crashing. And as I looked, I saw that somebody was on a motorcycle. It looked like one person maybe driving it and lost control or had an accident and skidded out. And they were on the ground and their head, you could tell they had a head, head injury. And uh, nobody moved towards the injured person because culturally there's a lot of issues there. There's a lot of reasons that I won't take time to explain, but some of them are legitimate. Um, so they didn't go towards the person. And I said to myself, I already knew enough being there that short of time that this is the way it's going to go. And I said to myself, oh, shoot, here's another situation where somebody could really use that kind of good Samaritan, but nobody's going to help. And I saw somebody run towards them. Um, and I thought, wow, maybe they will help, you know, and that person reached the man laying on the pavement and he began to jump over the body back and forth, almost like playing a hopscotch game, and and then walked away. And I was like, "What? what is this? What is this going on? And so I went and asked the Cambodian, could you explain to me what just happened? And they said, well, we believe that some, when you're unconscious, the soul leaves the body, and so we jump back and forth over the body to call back the, the soul. And um, it was right then and there I realized, even though I'd lived with a Cambodian family and in the midst of a family and had cross-cultural training in a Bible college setting, as I stood there, I realized, wow, how does a Minnesota girl <laughs> land in, in the midst of a folk Buddhist culture so different from my own and make disciples of Jesus Christ? Um, so that was like the beginning of my learning journey. But God began to teach me step by step by step. And um, yeah, I think six or seven years into it, this, uh, so let me back up a little bit. So when I went to Cambodia, it would be called an unreached people group. I'm sure you've heard that terminology, least reached or unreached people group. And so our first wave of missionaries, myself, were like going into this unreached people group. So it was sort of like an incubator for new work. We weren't going into a field where tons of precedence was said. There were some, and a lot was destroyed during the genocide there. Um, the genocide is a whole other story in itself, really. Um, there were three million Cambodians uh, killed in Cambodia um, hmm. in four-year time period. So I went into a context that was beyond my imagination of, of suffering and post-traumatic syndrome and just, wow, I can't, I mean, I could talk you know, all, all afternoon about that. But what happened, I believe, as we missionaries went in, which tends to be the default for many cross-cultural workers, is we conceptualize and organize the church and disciple-making and ministry based on our culture, our standard of living, and our experiences. And that's how we set up missions. That's how we set up everything. How would we do this? What would church look like in America? And that's kind of how we, we ended up setting up and conceptualizing. And then seven years into that, there was a coup, um, a very bloody, violent coup. And so all the missionaries, uh, expatriates, foreigners had to be evacuated from the country. And that was seven years into a lot of difficult, hard, groundbreaking missions work. But you can imagine everybody disappeared. <laughs> and that was a wake-up call for me. Um, it really changed the way I think about missions. Um, there's a quote that I read way after this experience, and it's some a man who did missions in Taiwan, and he wrote this statement 81 years ago. He said, the question as to whether at any point, I'm actually gonna read it just because my memory isn't like that super. <laughs> um, the question as to whether work 
at any point of its development can still be maintained by the local people if it is left by the missionary forms the best test of soundness of our mission policies. If the answer is in the negative, then we have either planted a dead thing or planted a living thing badly. And so I started asking myself, if I cannot go back into Cambodia, everything that I planted, conceptualized and planted, will the Cambodians be able to perpetuate, sustain, and multiply those efforts without me? And the answer was yes in some cases, no in many cases. And overall missions work, I would say a lot of it would have crumbled and not be able to be sustained by the Cambodian people. So it completely changed the way I started to see missions. So when I, the country did open up in a couple of weeks, so we did end up going back. But when I went back, I prayed and I said, God, start to show me how to do missions different from this day going forward. I didn't get it all right right, right away, but God began to show me thing by thing of how to do it differently from how I was doing it. 